whenever I used to interview, uh, <laughs> used to. What's up everyone, it's Jay here, uh, and I wanted to do a video today on uh, passing the take home challenge uh, for data scientists, right? Uh, and this is the very much uh, dreaded, I think, take home challenge and assignment because uh, whenever I used to interview, um, anyway, whenever I used to interview, I literally hated uh, take home challenges so much that when they uh, told me that the next step in the process was getting a take home challenge for the interview process, I would just uh, straight up decline and then move on to the next company. Um, and the reason why uh, I didn't like it uh, was because of the fact that a lot of the times uh, you couldn't get any feedback on what you were actually uh, working on, right? And so uh, even in an interview, right, even when I'm talking to someone uh, face to face, even over Zoom, uh, I get some feedback, right? If I say something and then I can ask them, uh, was that the correct answer? And they'll be like, uh, no. Or they'll be like, uh, let's move on. You're, you're running out of time and I have some place to be, right? Um, and so, yeah, in general, I would say take home challenges really suck because of the fact that uh, many times they're one over, you know, three hours long uh, and uh, essentially just uh, sucks up like a ton of your time because generally most people will then take uh, even longer time on it because uh, they know everyone else is taking three hours. Um, and then two, they also are very ambiguous in terms of their requirements, right? And so um, if you get like an assignment, take home challenge that basically tells you to uh, analyze some data and write a presentation on it or uh, build this model and see what kind of accuracy you get, right? Um, while the latter is actually a little bit more specific, uh, I think the first part, like analyzing data, is very ambiguous, right? Uh, and you don't know exactly what you're being graded on, if you're being graded on length, uh, if you're being graded on complexity, if you're being graded on some sort of accuracy metric. Uh, it's very difficult. And so I would say uh, I want to talk about like a few tips that we can actually work on to actually get around and pass a data science challenge uh, when you're actually forced to do one, uh, which is mo in most cases when you are uh, given a take home challenge by a company. Um, and so here are the seven steps that I usually go through, right? Uh, the first one is pretty straightforward. It's uh, ask if there's an alternative to doing the data science challenge. <laughs> and um, this one uh, lets you supersede the whole process, so I highly recommend it. But uh, many times um, with recruiters and with companies, uh, especially startups, uh, they will uh, be kind of more uh, forthcoming and understanding if you actually don't want to do a data science take home challenge and instead want to do a technical interview. Um, it does get tough because sometimes it is illegal to uh, offer some candidates a data science take home challenge and then offer some candidates uh, just a technical screen. Uh, so many times uh, some companies, uh, what they can do is actually offer one or the other to the candidate. Uh, and usually they have to state this up front. Uh, but if they don't, then try to actually ask uh, up front if you can just avoid uh, doing the take home challenge for uh, a technical screen, if you'd rather prefer that. Um, two, uh, ask upfront for expectations and for feedback. Uh, so uh, one of the biggest challenges, as I said before, is not understanding the actual requirements of what's going to go on in a take home challenge, right? And so uh, if instead you can actually get like an idea of a rubric, uh, get an idea of what you're actually going to be graded on, uh, that will at least help you uh, understand where to get started and where to focus your time and energy on, right? Um, I do understand that it's, you know, really difficult to talk to um, recruiters, uh, maybe sometimes back and forth because they're also a middleman between a hiring manager. Uh, and so if you have the chance, I would say just send them an email uh, and word it something like this. Uh, and it will be like, hi, thanks for sending over the take home assignment. I'm excited to start it and we'll be sure to send it back in uh, three days, X days, uh, with my completed solution. Additionally, I was wondering if I could be provided with a set of general guidelines on how the assignment will be graded. I definitely want to make sure I'm focusing and demonstrating the correct skill set, skill set for the take home and not accidentally going down a rabbit hole. And then lastly, I would really appreciate it if after I sent in my take home assignment, I could get some feedback on it, regardless or not, I move on in the interview process. 
It really made a lot to understand what I did wrong or where I excelled for my own technical growth. Thanks. Uh, and so if you do something like that, if you send over that email, uh, generally what we've done is we ask for upfront expectations, we ask for feedback, they may not grant it. Uh, on the very upside, they do grant it and they tell you they'll do all these things. On the very downside, they won't reply at all, and which you're in the same spot that you already were. Um, either way, uh, I think it'd be very much uh, beneficial to try it. Okay, uh, tip number three, ask questions and state assumptions. Uh, and so this kind of goes along into the last uh, kind of statement that uh, and tip that I just gave, right? In that if you ask uh, questions ahead of time, when you're actually receiving the assignment, then it'll help you mitigate problems in the future. So let's say something is worded uh, very unclearly, or let's say that uh, you see some like data inaccuracies and you wanna know if uh, that was meant to be, right? Uh, you don't just wanna just go ahead and uh, proceed with your assignment uh, like nothing happened, right? You actually want to uh, work on uh, asking and clarifying for what, um, you can actually get more details on. Uh, and many of the times this might be a mistake or many times uh, they just didn't think about it and they just thought you knew everything. Uh, so definitely ask questions. And if you can't get in touch with them, with them, then state the assumptions ahead of time and be like, hey, I saw this. I'm gonna assume that this was uh, the correct uh, interpretation of the data. I'm gonna now move on with my further analysis. Cool. Um, so do that. Uh, and a lot of the times, uh, other examples uh, that play into this are, um, let's say that um, you wanted to use uh, a different kind of model because it was less complex, but it was easier to implement, right? So you want to use XGBoost instead of TensorFlow. Uh, state it, because you have to state why you're doing some of these things. Uh, just like how in an interview you would state, uh, I would use this model over this model because of X, Y, and Z. Uh, cool. Uh, tip number four, uh, follow like a general step for modeling questions. Uh, and these general steps are basically pretty straightforward. It's uh, data cleaning, minimal feature selection, impute missing values, uh, create a classification pipeline, uh, try training with a couple of scikit-learn classifiers, uh, and then tune your hyperparameters hyper with grid search. Uh, so these are just kind of like a baseline step that you should do for any kind of model. Um, and I would say that uh, this will probably take you even af uh, at least probably three hours to set up for any kind of data set you have, especially when you're factoring in cleaning and then building and then hyperparameter tuning, right? Uh, and so if you do all these things, uh, you will at least cover most of your bases in terms of uh, what the minimum kind of required uh, mindset is for like a really extensive model building project. Um, totally depends on how, uh, complex you think the uh, employer is and how uh, stringent they think they are. But again, that goes back to tips you know, two and three in terms of asking questions and stating your assumptions. Cool. Uh, tip number five, uh, make your code readable. Uh, this one is really important and I think it is a little bit undervalued because of the fact um, that when I personally also did take home assignments, I would uh, you know, do the project and then it'd be like three or four hours by that point. It'd be like, oh, okay, this is about um, the three or four hour cutoff that they said, I'm just going to send it in. And then it'd be like immediate rejection. Um, and that's because of the fact that uh, the hiring managers and the data scientists on the team are actually probably reading your code, right? They're going through it uh, and trying to see if they can actually understand what's happening. So if they open up this file, uh, and they see they can't understand anything that's going on. It's like super messy, hasn't been refactored at all. Um, you're not gonna do well, right? You're not gonna pass uh, because they wanna understand that if you code in production with their environment, uh, they'll be able to understand it if they need to fix it later on. So making your code super readable, super organized uh, with easy requirements is definitely necessary. Um, one framework that I found super helpful is the cookie cutter data science framework. Um, I'll link it in the uh, description below, but effectively it's a really good guide on how to organize uh, your code, organize requirements, um, especially for data science model building projects uh, within a specific like exploratory analysis section, a pipeline section, a building the model section, and then an end analysis summary metric section. Um, 
Second to the last tip, uh, write tests and comments. Uh, this is kind of based on the last one as well. And so effectively uh, testing your code uh, is always necessary when you're building applications um, or building models uh, with like certain uh, functions such as classification uh, or testing. Um, and then always commenting on each function is uh, really important as well. Uh, and so doing these are pretty much uh, real like easy gimmies. You know, you can go through 15 minutes, just go through, write te like a few tests, um, write comments on each function, telling what it does, just helps with general readability. Uh, and then lastly, um, summarize your thought process in under 500 words. Uh, I can't emphasize this last tip enough uh, because it's really important for you to actually be able to uh, summarize what you learned uh, in the entire take home process, right? Uh, and summarize what you actually did, right? And so uh, imagine someone is doing a TLDR, right? Uh, when I get like take home projects or in the past when I've looked at people's resumes and looked at their projects, I generally don't scan it for more than like five minutes. Um, actually, to be honest, most of the time it's like one minute. Um, just because all I'm looking for uh, many times is like readability of code and then also uh, what you actually did. And then a lot of times I trust that your code runs anyway. Uh, but I think for a lot of these take home assignments that may not be the actual truth. Um, there's a lot of uh, going through, checking off rubrics. Did you do this? Did you do that? Um, and at the same time, I think being able to talk about it and being able to talk about the decisions that you made, why you made those decisions, um, why you uh, you know refactored this function, why you use this model, um, why you explored the data set and found uh, this weird um, you know visualization that proves uh, you didn't actually need to you know build the model. I don't know, whatever. Just in general, I think it um, it's helpful to talk about it uh, in the end, just for someone to basically do a, like a too long didn't read. Um, and to understand uh, exactly what you were thinking throughout the whole process. Um, cool. So uh, to summarize uh, for everyone, again, uh, first, ask if you can uh, do a technical screen instead. Secondly, ask up front for expectations and future feedback. Third is ask questions and state assumptions. Fourth is put in the baseline level of modeling, which is uh, the five or six things that you can do when you're building a model, if it's a modeling take home assignment, um, five, make your code readable, six, write some tests and comments. And then lastly, summarize your thought process. Awesome. Uh, if you guys have any more questions or want to check out some example take home assignments, uh, check out interview query. We have a bunch of take home assignments, uh, from data scientists, uh, that, uh, we have kind of organized. Um, and yeah, thank you for watching. Bye.